Hello friends and followers and welcome to a new episode of the RAW series brought to you by Montana Cans. Um, in this episode I paint, I try to cut as less as possible. I want to show you the whole process of painting a legal graffiti in a more or less legal spot. And yeah. I don't want to hide anything, I want to show you all the problems that I have even after 20 years of practice. And yeah, we start in the garage. And you can see me here removing the caps from the spray cans just for the transport in my trunk because it is really annoying if you have some spray cans in your trunk and suddenly one of them starts to spray. Yeah, I will speed up the process of packing the cans because I did not have a real good concept and I will explain my color combination when I'm at the spot. So, speed up! This is my social media bag. Um, I put all my camera equipment inside of the social media bag and the extra batteries and the bat battery pack. If you have any questions about the process, about the equipment, about anything, please feel free to write a comment. I answer nearly every comment. And what you can see there on the passenger seat is the design for a recent commission and I want to make a YouTube video about this as well but not in a raw style I want to make it in a regular vlogging style yeah and now I put these two very massive bags from Montana cans in my trunk everything's packed closing the garage closing the trunk and we start driving to this spot. Hey yo, Brack, ich fahr jetzt los. Okay, and after 10 minutes, I finally arrived at Belen. It's a very small village, um, some kilometers away from Warendorf, and my friend Wreck already was watching out of the window, and he will um, open the door to this special place where we want to paint today. Oh, my coffee. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, Rack told me that he will um, make a birthday party in this um, building because um, on Monday he had his 25th birthday, so he's 10 years younger than me. And um, Ach, because geil. I'm an idiot, I did not know that he has a, had a birthday already. And I noticed it at, it at this moment. Yeah, I don't know if it really makes so much sense to translate everything that we were talking in German. But in general, I was just impressed about the space and about the different um, possibilities to paint here and there probably making yeah. some throwies and this stuff and now I will stop um, translating German it we will talk about 10 minutes in German um, yeah in general you will understand what we are we are talking it's nothing really necessary <laughs> to um, to understand yeah yeah Der pinke Raum. <lacht> oh, voll geil! Mega der Hintergrund. Ja, okay, ich muss heute mehrere Bilder malen. Ja. Ja? Ah. Auch fett. Auch fett. Auch fett. Und ja, oben, oben können wir auch noch gucken, aber da ist jetzt halt. 
Okay, der rote Raum. We are talking just bullshit. It is really not necessary to understand what we are talking at this moment. We are just, oh, this is a room. Oh, this is our room oh, as well. Geil. Wow, this room Diese has nice Tapete walls. Da? Really, what are we talking ah. there? <laughs> of course, Wand. rooms das have walls. But this is a real, re this is really das a nice wall. Um, yeah, oh, but yeah. I did not decide to paint on this geil. wall at the end. Because geil I was slown over today. And... Um, yeah, there are some holes in the in the floor. Uh, we are not allowed to step on these holes, so it is not possible to paint on this yeah, wall. Uh, but it is a boring way. wall, anyways. And yeah, I will stop oh, translating. Just it is. It makes no sense. It is just we're talking bullshit. I just want to show you the different rooms because um, now everything's still clean. And um, I can tell you that Rag, that he is, yeah, he is a machine. He's painting very, very fast, um, and he paints a lot this day. Yeah, it is really not possible to paint here. Okay. Ja, die Wand hier ist ja im Prinzip auch nicht schlecht. Einmal so zweigeteilt mit der Steckdose, das ist interessant. Ja, cool. Jo. Dann. Äh Dann haben wir den ganzen Tag Zeit. Das ist ja das Gute. Essen, Trinken habe ich dabei. Wie sieht es hier mit Pipi Kaka aus? Gibt es hier noch Toiletten? Nee, da ist das Problem. Sonst müssen wir immer Strom gibt es hier noch? Nee. Auch nicht, okay. Wenn wir noch auf Toilette muss, dann können wir hier sowas in der Wohnung machen. Ja, ja, nö, nee, muss ich ja nicht, aber. Ja, cool. Okay. So, this this will be our uh, fill-in, and this will be the colors for uh, outlines and blocks. Um, but we will see. We will see. Now let's set up the iPad and start time lapse mode. And. You can see there I cleaned I cleaned the lens and usually I clean every freaking lens always before I start to record. I always take my shirt and I clean the lens but so somehow I touched the lens of my POV cam from the camera on my head. <sighs> yeah. This um, blurry dot will still be there for about 40 minutes. Yeah, but now we start, now the interesting part starts. And I was not prepared at all. The morning, at the morning, my son Matteo, he's the smaller of my two sons, and I have a daughter as well. She's one and a half year old, and my son Matteo is seven years old now and his brother as well but they are not twins they are just the same age in september and um, matteo told me that he would love to to have a black crocodile as a character and i promised him to paint a black crocodile today so we will paint a character and a style as well everything in freestyle everything we know is we have these colors that are standing on the floor and we want to paint a black crocodile. Yeah, and now.
in my imagination, I was thinking about this piece that I was painting um, two years ago in Frankfurt. And I made a little experiment. I wanted to try to paint the same, the exact same style just by my imagination. I did not see um, a photo of something of this um, piece for about a year or maybe even longer. I just wanted to paint this piece by my imagination and it is so funny that nearly everything was totally different but I had a good feeling that I will paint a very good style because I like the piece from Frankfurt still a lot. I was still remembering that the M was pushing through the hole of the O and this is why I start with the hole of the O now and I I'm not really sure what I'm doing there I'm just trying to to fit my imagination my blurry imagination um, with what I'm painting there and this is the reason why I don't make these super cool straight lines painting very fast. No, I'm, I'm scribbling a little bit. I'm trying out stuff and like you can see there now I even um, changed the position of the O because it does not fit that well. Yeah, and I'm trying to get close to the perfect um, proportions. And I think I painted even much better O than I did in Frankfurt. But I will um, show you the comparison between the Frankfurt style and the style that I paint in Belen at the end of the video. So in about three hours or something. I, I, I don't know how long this video will be at the end, at this moment. Okay, there are way too many lines at the same spot, so it is time for my second color that I regularly, <laughs> regularly use while doing the first lines, my eraser color. And now I start erasing the first lines that I definitely don't want to use, so that I get a better overview of what I'm doing there.
by going back a little bit, I noticed that the angle of the left leg of the M is way too, too straight. It looks so stiff, it does not have so much flow. And so um, I decided to spread the legs of the M a little bit. Spreading legs is always a very good idea. And um, I spread it, the legs a little bit, made them more wide open so um, that the M gets a, it, it starts to dance a little bit more um, than just standing around stupid. And if you uh, see it from a bigger distance, you will notice that the serif of the S, the left leg of the M, and the left side of the O, that they all have the same angle. Angles are something that is very important for me. And at this moment I had the feeling that the left leg of the M could get a nice hook um, that touches the O, but... Uh, yeah, this did not really work because it, it, there, there were too many things at the same spot. There was one part of the S, there was the connection between the O and the S and the hook. So I decided, no, this will create too much confusion. I will not make it, I will remove this hook. But sometimes you just need to try out things, you need to see them first. And if you don't find the right solution, you can always go back, use your eraser color, erase the first lines. It does not have to be everything perfect on the, on the first try. Um, yeah, it can't be, in my, in my opinion. You al always need to try. I can imagine a lot of things that other people can't imagine. And if I can't imagine every, every solution that you could probably find with letters, um, don't feel bad if you can't as well.
Okay, friends and followers, I did not fall asleep, but at this moment I really would love to speed up the process <laughs> of struggling around with the with the first lines. Yeah. The S the S was so easy. Yeah, but even the S needs some adjustments. Yeah, I, I will just do adjustments here and there. Um, I take I take care about the thicknesses and the thin parts of the letters. I take care about that there are um, enough um, slicing parts, overlapping parts, um, parts parts that melt together, like the S and the O, for example, or the O and the E, and um, yeah, I always try to make everything as balanced out as possible and this needs a lot of tiny adjustments. Yeah, and here you can see my special shaking technique. Um, yeah, it is very special. <laughs> okay, I will shut up. The next three minutes you can see me painting and after that I will have some more very helpful informations for you. Um, enjoy.
Okay, and now I would have loved to um, fill the empty spaces above the, the piece with some um, extra elements, some chips, some lids or something. But I remembered that my son Matteo wanted me to paint a black crocodile. And so I decided to, to go back, go down to the ground, get a better overview of the whole piece. Go down now. Snow! Go down to the ground now. Okay, now I go down to the ground, get an overview. I'm super satisfied with the first lines, how they look like at this moment. And now my brain works. And finally, I made a decision where to put the crocodile. And now I start with a pretty rough sketch. Just uh, two stupid lines that... Um, give me the idea of the mouth of the crocodile and they help me a lot to to make every following decisions about where to put the eyes um, to get the a feeling for the size of the crocodile and um, yeah it, when i was a child i was painting so many monsters and crocodiles and dinosaurs and um, I paint dinosaurs and monsters and dragons and all these creatures for about uh, for more than 30 years now so this is super easy for me I don't have to struggle with any um, proportions or something I painted them so many times it is just I can I can wake up at night and paint a cool crocodile well, I would say that I'm not really able to paint a very good style when you wake me up at night because I have to think so much more while painting uh, graffiti styles. Yeah. This is the tongue, the tongue of the crocodile. Painting the throat in black. And now adding some of the teeth. Not too many teeth, just some. This always looks... I, th I always like crocodiles with just some teeth. Much more than crocodiles with too many teeth. I think they look more cool and I think that the Disney um, crocodiles have not so many teeth as well. Yeah, and the idea was that I um, let the crocodile interact with the graffiti piece so I um, paint its claws and it is grabbing the E from the sides. And the whole crocodile um, is behind the graffiti piece and the, the tail of the crocodile should appear behind the S.
Okay, now it's time for for the blocks. Um, and the vanishing point of the blocks is the socket. Because there's a socket in the middle of the wall. And I thought it is funny to use the socket as the vanishing point for the depth of the blocks. And now I make a funny mistake <laughs> because I painted some blocks of an element that did not exist at all because I just forgot to um, to remove these first lines with the eraser color. Yo, and 8 minutes after deciding to paint the first lines of the character first, I know now that I can put a chip on the M to give the M on this side a little bit more weight because I have to balance the weight of the character as well. But I still leave a little bit of a gap because there will be the heart on top of the style as well. Yeah, and the heart, the broken halo, how I call it, is um, it has some weight as well. I always, when I balance out my style, it feels for me like um, there is, there are, are some meteorites, meteorites flying in the um, in the universe, and they all have some kind of gravity. And they all, it has to be some kind of a, of a group of meteorites who fly together and who all have their own gravity and who all um, have an effect on each other. What I, what I feel about the elements within a graffiti piece are, are some kind of energy fields around every element that I use. Okay, fill in time. Yeah, I decided to um, make a fill in with this um, greenish color at the top, and then I will go over lighter green colors to um, um, to bluish colors. Yeah, and I make the fill in with the skinny cap because I did not want to have so much dust in this room. Um, if you are painting at a place where you don't have so much fresh air, sometimes it is better to, to work longer with a skinny cap than making the whole room full of spray dust and, um, yeah, and feel sick after the day of painting.
And as always, um, I, I, I told you in a lot of um, older videos already that I'm not a big fan of making perfect fill-ins um, because this building will be um, demolished anyways. So um, probably if you see this video, um, the building will be demolished already. So the piece is gone and everything that I will keep is just this video and some cool photos. And if this, at the moment, when you, when you skip now, when you skip now to the end of the video, um, I don't think that so many people will see this video the first 41 minutes anyways. But if you, if you are one of the guys who's, who sees this moment of the video, uh, please, um, please write your, your best joke. Write your best joke in the comments. This would be funny. So I can laugh a little bit. Yeah, but, but I'm not a fan of, of super clean fill-ins. I just fill in the fill-in so much that I, that I don't see that it is dirty on the photo or in the video at the end. So you can skip. At the end of the video, everything will look super clean. But at this moment, it does not look so clean. But this doesn't matter at all because you won't see it at the end. Just do enough. Don't don't paint too much and save cans for for your pocket, for your money, saving money and for the environment. And your health. Do it for your health. Matteo hat sich das gewünscht. Ja. Matteo hat sich das gewünscht. Ein schwarzes Krokodil. Und da muss ich auf jeden Fall, es wird ganz dunkel und dann mit so ein bisschen Lichteffekten drin. Ja. Und leuchte Augen bitte. I just told my friend Rack about the crocodile and um, that the crocodile will get glowing eyes. This was my plan as well. I didn't tell you about it um, at the beginning of this video, but the crocodile will get no pupils. It will get just white glowing eyes. And you can see me um, shaking and rotating um, the ball inside of the spray can. But I don't rotate the spray can itself. Um, do you know this um, shaking like a cocktail mixer does it? The person who is making you the cocktails. He always rotates the whole um, cocktail mixer. And this is 
terrible. Don't do this. The spray can is way too heavy to do this. You will destroy your wrist. I have so much problems with my wrists. I, I have always pain a little bit. Not so much, but, but more than one year ago I had so much pain in my wrists that I was not even able to hold a, a cup of coffee. And um, I try to avoid everything that makes any stress to my wrists and this is why I always remember myself don't make the cocktail mixer shake because the cocktail mixer shake is so much stress for your wrist don't do this it's just my suggestion for you if you are shaking your cans I know it looks cool to do the cocktail mixer but it is really it is hardcore stress for your wrist Protect your wrist. You need your wrists. Okay, at this moment I had real trouble to decide which of the different parts of the letters should slice into which one. Because you have always eight different possibilities and I try to, to choose... I try to choose the version that makes as much visible as possible so that the yeah I think I have to make a tutorial about the slicing because the, t the slicing in my opinion is the best way to combine different letters to overlap them but still show the most important parts and um, yeah not not to hide too much from the letter that is underneath the letter above yeah this makes sense yeah and this is why I do the slicing because I can still show the outlines of the other letter and it looks just beautiful yeah.
Okay, and at this moment, finally, I start applying some of the drop shadows. And I always use the darker color in the, in the fill-in to make a drop shadow in the lighter color. Yeah. <sighs> I'm pretty tired. And the, and the weekend was really exhausting, but not because I was drinking so much. I had the terrible idea um, to make uh, some camping with a tent in our garden. And it was too cold. It was just about 11 degrees outside. And um, we were, I was sleeping in an own tent. And my children, they had a guest who was sleeping in the tent as well. Yeah, and um, every half of an hour, one of them was awake. One of them needed to go to the toilet. Uh, needed some help because the pillow was gone or something. Yeah, and uh, then one of the children started freezing and the other children were still sleeping and yeah at the end at four o'clock at night i was maybe i had one hour of sleep <laughs> and at four o'clock at night all the children were finally not in the tent they were all sleeping in our home and uh, yeah and I was just in bed and then our daughter woke up and at uh, Saturday evening it was my night that means that I have to take care for the baby because uh, uh, my my wife is doing one night and I do always the other night so um, yeah we we don't we share we share the, the problem of having to wake up at night because of the baby yeah and so I did not get so much sleep at the weekend and if you have children you can't sleep at the daytime as well so yeah I'm still a little bit tired just wanted to tell you that I have some real regular father problems as well so don't don't make camping holidays in your garden at the weekend when it's too cold outside
This, by the way, was the mother of the girlfriend of Wreck. Um, I think the building we were painting in was her building, but I'm not that sure. I don't know so much about the family of Wreck, but they were very interested. But of course, they were probably a little bit afraid that we damaged too much or something. But I already know this because I paint about two, sometimes I paint three commissions a week. And most times I paint for different people and um, they are always, they are afraid that uh, we make too much spray dust everywhere and we have to cover everything because um, yeah, they are always afraid if someone who paints with spray paint visits them. I don't know if they are the same afraid when you are um, painting with regular bucket paint, but the spray can in German culture, um, yeah, it's, it seems to be something that people are afraid of. And sometimes my customers are really strange. But um, I give, always give my very best to be the nicest person I can be so that they feel comfortable and that they don't have a bad feeling while I am painting. Because um, I'm a very sensitive guy and if the people around me are nervous and they are all afraid that, that something bad might happen and that it all could look like shit at the end, um, yeah, this makes my work even harder because I have to fight with myself as well while I'm painting. So I'm always trying to make everyone around me feel as comfortable as possible. And this is why I'm always nice to the people around me. This is probably pretty selfish, but it pr protects me against getting too nervous as well. Um, but people in Germany are always nervous if they see people with spray cans, like me. And they very often they call the police. I would say the police controlled my identity card more than 100 times already, or even 150 times, because of being a graffiti guy and painting in public and somebody called the police, or maybe the police just, um, sees me painting somewhere and because obviously I'm a criminal because I have some spray paint um, they just um, control me in case that I'm a criminal and they can catch me now I don't know if they really think that I'm so stupid probably I am a little bit stupid but not that stupid yeah the police And now I'm already making fill-in and, and um, first lines for more than one hour. I'm so slow. This is, this is a real slow Nova day.
Okay. Adding some drop shadows. Like I already did a half of an hour ago. Um, down there at the S. Now I use the lighter color in the next color in this greenish blue. Oh, but this looks a little bit weird. I don't know if I change this later. Yeah. And if you have to make a drop shadow in a dark color where you don't have any even more dark color, you can um, add a shadow by adding light. This is a trick that I always use. If you can add a darker shadow, you can add some lighter light. Lighter light and darker shadow. Okay, I know I, I should have done this um, before starting to fill in the blocks, but um, yeah, I don't care that I do it in the, in the right um, order. If I have the feel, feeling in the middle of the painting that I still need to, to change a little bit of the of the fading or add some more color to the to the fill in i just do it i don't care if it is the right order some people they are they keep it like a religion that you have to make the fill in done first and do the outlines after that um yeah if i forget something i forget something it is not like that it has to stay like that it is just color um there's not so much pressure on me because I always know that I can paint over it as much as I want because every color is um, covering over every other color. So I don't care so much about the right order. But of course I try to make the fill-in first. It does not make any sense to do perfect first lines and do the fill-in after that because you will always have some um, overspray some dust in the lines if you do the <laughs> fill in after the outlines this is really stupid don't do this but if you have to fix some little parts yeah, you can paint the outlines twice we are not in any hurry
I know that a lot of writers are very proud that they're doing very smooth lines, but um, if you paint on a pretty small scale, for me it is not possible to make everything with smooth lines anymore. So I do the scribble lines, always just, yeah, I'm just scribbling. But not now, not now, please not now. Do the good line, do it, no, no, ah, 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 ah. Yeah, and it would look so professional if I would make this line just like I would have done this line 100,000 times. But doing this dribble line is so much easier. And nobody will see it at the end at the... If you see at the result, it looks still cool. But for a video, scribble lines are not that cool. I know this. But in my opinion, it is not possible to do the straight lines, the smooth lines, if you paint on such a small scale. So you have to cut a little bit more, do some scribble lines and it will look like if the wall would, would be six meters wide and not only three and a half. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah.
I know that a lot of people are always complaining while painting and it is pretty rarely that you paint with a person <laughs> who starts singing because he is so happy about the perfect proportions but this is me I'm really I'm really deeply happy if I paint letters and if I see that they start to look perfect on the wall this this makes me really deeply happy and the contrast between the outline and the dark um, bluish fill in petrol color or what it is i don't know the name of the color um, to make the contrast a little bit higher i used a lighter bluish color and made a highlight to increase the contrast. Mm -hmm. I said that the that I messed up every outline this day. Yeah, this is this was a real bad outline day. I have to admit that, and I still remember that <coughs> that that day I was not that satisfied with my outlines. But we all have bad outline days, and um, I want to be as honest honest as possible to you. And of course, I show you how I mess up a lot of outlines as well. Um, because I don't like the, this idealized um, picture of, a, of the perfect graffiti writer who paints with two hands, who makes the fill-in with the left hand while already making the outlines with the right hand and all this crazy stories that I already heard about urban myths of graffiti writers and what they do. I in person never met such a superhero graffiti guy. They are, they are all regular persons and they paint in a normal time. They are not super fast. And you can make you can make everything a little bit more cool with the right editing. But this is not the intention of this kind of videos. I want to show the whole process. I want to show all the problems. I want to show all the lines that did not work out as I wanted them. I want to show the struggle. I want to show the little tryouts, the erasing, all the normal stuff. You know, this is what I want to show in this video. Yeah.
just had to adjust the swing of the O a little bit because um, yeah, it looked a little bit crooked. I don't want any crooked letter. Letters, they have to, to look proud and cool and elegant and never crooked. And finally, finally, I start choosing the drop shadow colors for the background because I had the idea the whole time to use this stripe background with darker pinky colors as well. And so I was choosing the perfect two pinky colors. Okay, this pinky color is too dark, but I think there was one pinky color left over in one of the bags somewhere or not okay I found the perfect two pinky colors yeah and now I adjust the drop shadow
Jutti! Jutti! Okay, now things are getting interesting because I start adding the shadows to my blocks. And I use a shock black for the shadows. And this is the reason why I did not use black outlines. I know that black outlines are always safe because um, you will always have some kind of a contrast except if you make black fill-in and black outlines. But um, yeah, I try to make a little bit lighter fill-in so that I can make a little bit lighter outlines as well so that I can make with black still some shadow within the outlines and within the blocks. Yeah. And I nearly never make a different color for the outlines um, in comparison to the block. I don't know why. I just don't like it. I like it so much more if outline and blocks is the same color. And this is something I like about the spray paint as well, that you can paint a little bit of black and you can directly cut the black with the outline block color again, make everything sharp and clean. Yeah, and I decided to make a little bit more bigger outline outside of the piece. Yeah. And applying a little bit more shadow here and there. Okay, friends and followers, for my personal statistics, now we have one hour and 49 minutes. You are a very, very patient person. Please write a sentence with a kangaroo in the comments. So I know all the kangaroo persons, <laughs> they are all very, very patient. Hmm. Wow, this was a perfect cut. So beautiful.
Okay, what is the rule behind my shadows? Um, the rule is all the holes, like the hole of the E or the hole of the O, they get darker the deeper you are inside of the hole. So I try to fade from the deepest uh, position to the front of the style with the black. So that the deep parts of the hole get very black and everything that's more at the front of the piece will get more will get a little bit of light. Yeah. And the shadows here they don't make so much sense. Um, I can't even explain why I make the shadows at this place, how I make them. It is just fantasy. It makes no real sense. It is just necessary that your eye is satisfied. So I make a little bit of shadow here and there. It does not have to make so much sense. That was a beautiful, that was a beautiful um, highlight. Perfect. If all my outlines would have been so beautiful like this highlight.
Ja. Okay, the next color after adding so much shadow to my outlines and blocks now comes the highlight color. Um, now let's add some light to the blocks as well no. to make them more three-dimensional. Mm. Oh yeah, this is such a wonderful process. And these little triangles are caused by the fact that the bar of the E makes some kind of a shadow on the blocks and only the front triangle gets some light.
Okay, and finally, we can start painting all the details of the character. Because I'm pretty satisfied with the piece already, but I will, I will still add some more effects to it, some highlights and some cracks. But now I want to paint um, the character first and do all the final highlights and final effects and so on at the end. So there is still a little bit, maybe a, I would say there's still an hour to go. And after that, we are finally done. This is such a long process. Adding some shadows within the mouth.
Yeah, I was definitely putting too much spray paint um, on the left eye, but you can always use your finger, swipe it to the side and nobody will see it. Yeah. I'm a little faker. <laughs> Fake it until you make it. And if you ask yourself why I always um, punch the spray paint on my shoe, um, this is the most convenient way to um, get the, the balls free. Because these spray cans, they are all pretty old. Some of them are five or maybe six years old. And um, if they're standing around so, so long, the pigments they go down to the ground of the spray can and um, the ball gets stuck in the pigments yeah. and if you, if, you, if you punch the spray can against your shoe suddenly the ball will be free again yeah, it was not really necessary to use the tiny pink stencil cap for this details, but I just wanted to try it out a little bit. Oh, there's somebody at the door. But my wife, she's going to the door. Oh. Who is there? Oh, Uncle Jürgen. Hello, Uncle Jürgen. Hey. But I will, um, I will not go down now. I will. I want to edit this until the end so that you get your new YouTube video because you're waiting about three weeks already. Oh, oh. Um, I'm cleaning the tiny pink stencil cap now. Perfect. Hallo, Onkel Jürgen. Ja, Möchtest du auch was sagen? Sag mal was, du bist gerade auf, auf Band. Sprich da rein. Ja, äh, ich weiß nicht, ich weiß auch nicht. <lacht> Sehr gut. Okay, I had a funny talk with Uncle Jürgen, but now I'm back. I'm back for you. Yeah, and one of the big advantages of the tiny pink stencil cap is that spray paint does not stick to the surface of the um, of the tiny pink stencil cap but I'm searching for different tools okay now is my, my son Oscar standing beside me was möchtest du Oscar? ich möchte gesagt ein bisschen backen du möchtest backen? Mm -hmm. okay my son Oscar wants to bake a cake probably was möchtest du backen? 
einfach mal mir eine kleine, ein paar Pizza zu, äh, möchte ich mir backen. Pizza? Ja. Okay. Weißt du denn schon, was es zum Abendbrot gibt? Pizza. Nee, ich weiß es nicht. Und das Oskar, ich habe noch acht Minuten, um mir das Video zu schneiden. Darf ich noch acht Minuten Video schneiden? Onkel Jürgen hat mich gerade auch schon gestört. Okay. Bis gleich. Bis gleich. Und wir machen heute den Fakt dann, dann Pizza, okay? Äh, kann ich nicht versprechen. Ich weiß nicht, ob wir Pizza da haben. Ja, ich will jetzt nichts versprechen, was ich nicht halten kann, Oski. Okay. Everybody is disturbing me. I have still eight minutes to edit the last hour of this video. <laughs> oh. oh man. Okay. But, uh, yeah. Yo. And like you can see, the tiny pink stencil cap does not make always so much sense. Um, I just wanted to try it a little bit out, but I think I'm much faster when I um, just don't use it, just use the level one skinny cap. It is pretty fine as well. And yeah, it is just much faster. But I will use the tiny pink stencil cap for some um, details later. I'm in love with it, but it does not make sense everywhere. It's probably the same like um, when I bought my first Copic markers um, back then, um, before digital painting. Copic markers were the high-end markers to paint with, and I even made the outlines with Copic markers, but it makes no sense. Copic markers are very good for um, for fill in and for bigger spaces so that they look like um, it was printed. But Copic markers make no sense for outlines. And uh, if I have a new tool, I always try it everywhere um, to get a feeling for the purpose. Where, where can I use it? Where does it make sense? Where does it make no sense? Probably sometimes I think it makes no sense, but I try it... Um, but I try it anyways, because maybe I'm wrong. And it makes sense to use it somewhere where I don't expect it makes sense. So I try everything. I'm not afraid to make mistakes. I want to make experience. This is important.
And here, it makes so much sense to use the tiny pink stencil cap for these super thin lines. Um, you can directly see the some of the thin lines were just cut it. But if you have to make such a thin line within a fading where you can't cut that easy. Now I clean the hole a little bit. Because the hole, it gets stuck over the time. You have to clean it sometimes. And now, oh, look at this. This is so beautiful. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Straight like made with a ruler. Bam. Mm. Wonderful. Yeah, and of course, if the the eyes are glowing, they make some reflections on the skin of the crocodile. <coughs> Perfect. And these little reflections make the skin of the crocodile look like it was it was wet.
Zo. Dat is handig. And finally, some white highlights on the blocks and on the outlines. Oh yeah, now everything gets really three-dimensional.
Schon wieder fertig. Nummer drei. Nummer drei. Ja. Ach, komm mal auf. Da haben wir jetzt noch ein paar Props. Du sollst auf jeden Fall Props bekommen. Und dann schon wieder in der Form. So ein Ja. Das 
und teilweise ein bisschen zu rotzig gefüllt. So. But at this moment I noticed that the drop shadow of the claw, of the upper claw and of the head of the crocodile, which did not have any drop shadow, um, that it is just too light and I wanted to add a more brownish drop shadow to make it a little bit more visible. And this was a real good decision. So, ja, das ist gut. Gut mit gut. Ja, yeah, sometimes I just speak to myself weird words that don't make any sense. I didn't even notice this before I started to record myself. But, um, yeah. I just do it. Yeah, and here you can see me um, adding some props. Props means people respect other people seriously. And um, these are some kind of greetings to other graffiti friends. And um, I give some props to my friend Dilk from Slovakia, to my friend Kia, 
um, from Münster and to my friend Wreck, who was at this moment at the other room.
And now I will destroy this beautiful rainbow, but that's it for today. Probably the longest video that I have ever done on this YouTube channel. Please uh, write down your opinion. Um, was it too long or do you want more of it? There's nothing more easy ten than to uh, produce videos like this. Okay, you already know these two pieces and Wreck, he is so fast. Slow Nova was, was slow the whole day. <laughs> Patrick Star. This is the first uh, character that um, Wreck painted. A nice chrome Wreck. Look at this beautiful shine. This is Wreck's main piece. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, this was a big joy. Quick, fast, and not so dirty. Sollen die dir auf Instagram folgen? Okay. If you want to follow his car, <laughs> because he has <laughs> nearly only car content. Uh, this is uh, Vrek's Instagram handle. Super cool. Super cool. Yo. Wonderful. Okay, I destroyed the rainbow. <laughs> uh, I don't know what I painted there. It was just totally freestyle without thinking at all I just wanted to paint a style and something happened with something I don't know if I like it um, yeah but that's really now that's it for today um, now I'm exhausted I'm exhausted now I'm really exhausted I think there is not so much fresh air in this room and now I get a little bit dizzy in my head. Yo, 
But a big thanks to Montana Cans for supporting my YouTube activities with a lot of free cans. Thanks a lot for being so supportive and being the best spray can brand on this planet. Check out the video description. Please don't forget to like the subscribe button. I hope that you were a little bit entertained. Um, and I hope to see you back in the next project.